Hey there, Charles here, and welcome to TDD in Unity, a series where I demonstrate test-driven development in Unity. If you're new to the series, please feel free to head on over to part one. If not, let's get right into it. As usual, we'll start off by removing completed items from the to-do list. In this video, we'll be exposing the current number of heart pieces on the heart class. To recap from last time, this new set of tests will be nested within a class called the Current Number of Heart Pieces property. This makes the output of the test runner a little easier to read. This organizational class inherits the Heart Tests class, which introduces a private property called Heart that is initialized with a new instance of a heart before every test. Take a look at our first test. This is a base case test. It'll drive the creation of the current number of heart pieces property. Now that we're all set, we can use ReSharper to generate the current number of heart pieces property on the heart class. This, of course, will be a calculated property. So we're going to have to remove the setter and populate the getter with some logic. But first, let's pay due diligence and switch over to the Unity editor to run our tests. Great. Everything passed, so it's time to write our next test. You might recall that our entire heart implementation is based on the fillamount property of image. Therefore, we'll need to use image.fillamount to calculate the value of current number of heart pieces. A heart consists of four heart pieces, so this test will assert that a heart with an image fill of 0.25 returns one for current number of heart pieces. All right, we have a failing test, so it's time to get our hands dirty, but not too dirty because this is an incredibly simple calculation. It's so simple that we're going to skip the process and just add it on the first try. All we have to do is multiply image.fillamount by 4. Now we're ready to switch over to the Unity Editor to run our tests. And it should come as no surprise that they've passed with flying colors. Let's switch back over to Visual Studio. At this point, we're good to go. For all intents and purposes, the code is written and the logic is sound. But there's no rule against writing more tests, so let's just add one more for peace of mind. It's simple enough. We expect current number of heart pieces to return 3 when the heart's image fill is 0.75. Okay, so we'll switch on over to the Unity Editor, let the test compile, and perfect. I feel good about this code, so we can move on. We've exposed current heart pieces on heart, so I can mark this item as complete. Before we switch gears, let's take care of this magic number. We can make heart just a touch more readable and human-friendly by replacing this hard-coded value with a constant. That way, when we look at this calculated property in six months, we don't have to scratch our heads and say, what does 4 represent again? By naming it after what it represents, heart pieces per heart, we can bake that understanding right into the class. And as with all refactorings, no matter how small, we can switch over to the Unity Editor and rerun the test to make sure we didn't break anything. Great. Now we can get back to work on the heart container class. In part three, we began implementing heart containers replenish method. Replenish is responsible for distributing heart pieces across the heart containers list of hearts. Right now, the replenish method is pretty dumb. It loops through all of the hearts calling replenish on each one and passing in the number of hearts that was passed into heart container.replenish. But now that we have access to current number of heart pieces on each heart, we can make heart containers replenish method a little more intelligent. This next test, hearts are replenished in order, will initialize a new heart container with two empty hearts. Then it will call heart container dot replenish with a value of one. This should result in only the first heart being replenished, or for the purpose of this test, this should result in the second heart remaining empty. That's because the hearts should be filled in order, starting with non-filled hearts first. 
Therefore, the test will assert that the second heart remains empty. Again, because the current implementation indiscriminately loops through all of the hearts, calling replenish on each one, the test will fail. And now that it has, we can drive our implementation forward. Now this won't necessarily be the cleanest or most optimized code, but it will be enough to get the job done. And once the tests are passing, we can always refactor. So the idea here will be to keep a running tally of the number of heart pieces that we have left to replenish. That's this variable here, number of heart pieces remaining. We'll initialize it with a method argument, and then decrement it by the number of heart pieces we've replenished on each iteration of the loop. We get the number of heart pieces replenished by subtracting the current number of heart pieces from 4. Now, pretty soon here, I'm going to expose this magic number, 4, as a static read-only property on heart. But realistically, I'll probably just want to expose another calculated property on heart called remaining number of heart pieces. You might be wondering why I didn't do that in the first place. Well, the honest truth is, I just didn't think of it until now. Test-driven development doesn't guarantee the best implementation on the first try, but using TDD arguably does increase productivity. And we can see that with what we've accomplished so far. We've consistently been improving our implementation and moving towards our end goal. Plus, once we get this test passing, we'll be able to refactor it to our heart's content. The last thing we'll do here is break out of the loop when number of heart pieces remaining is less than or equal to zero. Now that we're passing, I'm going to add two items to our to-do list. First, it's occurred to me that my test suite is lacking. I'm not asserting that replenish rolls over heart pieces correctly. For instance, if I have one half heart and one empty heart, then passing four into replenish should result in the empty heart being filled halfway. Secondly, I want to remove that magic number that I mentioned earlier. Let's get rid of that magic number like I mentioned before. We're going to call it heart pieces per heart. This is pretty trivial. We'll make it a static read-only property and simply access it in the replenish method in lieu of the hard-coded value. Another simple refactor complete. So let's switch over to Unity and rerun those tests. To finish off, let's add some items to the to-do list. In part 5, we're going to take a look at something that I'm pretty excited about, object builders. Object builders are a great way to create collaborators for social tests. Social tests are tests in which the unit under test communicates with actual instances of its collaborators. This is different from solitary tests, which are tests that deal with mocks or stubs of their collaborators. Adding data builders will allow us to abstract how images, hearts, and heart containers are created. We'll refactor our tests to use them, which should make them much easier to read as well as much more maintainable. As always, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, or subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and please leave any feedback or criticisms you may have. I truly do appreciate it. See you in the next part.